Thank you. Yes. All right. Welcome, everybody, and thanks to all of us for inviting me here. Well, I'm David Echocha, security engineer in ING, and uh, co founder of a project called IoTSec.eu. Um, I'm public speaker for different conferences such as, yeah, OWASAPSEC, uh, Black Hat, DevSecon, and yeah, uh, my focus is mobile application security automation, like we'll see during the talk, uh, IoT security, and yeah, like everybody I think in this room, I'm a builder but also a breaker. So why does mobile security matter today? I think you all know uh, this news, I think it's from yeah, August 26th, and yeah, it says that the Fortnite uh, Android app lets hackers install malware on their device. So you can imagine, I work for ING, right, a bank, and you can imagine if that title says um, critical flow in the ING app allo allows malware on your device, then everybody will delete that app, and I will be fired directly. My manager is there, so. <laughs> So, but what was the problem in this case? Well, problem or feature, let's say. Um, the problem was this line of code in the um, manifest file, Android manifest file, so write external storage. And it's a permission that allow, allows you to write and read from the external storage in the Android device. So every app can read and write in that storage. So you can imagine if you have a malware on your application, can overwrite, in that case, the Fortnite app and install malware on your device. So if we consider the Agile SDLC, uh, when should we, when is the best, what is the best place to detect vulnerabilities? Of course we want to detect uh, vulnerabilities as soon as possible, right? So during the requirements and design phase, through yeah, security requirements, security design review, and of course, threat model. And in this case, it's pretty cheap. You only have one bag of money there. Um, if we go on the second phase, so code and build, it's already more expensive, right? And if we take in consideration the vulnerability of the problem with the Fortnite app, uh, Fortnite's principle maybe wouldn't detect that problem, right? Because it's not in the security requirements, it's not in a threat model, so it's fine, right? But maybe if we have coding guidelines, yeah, that will be easily detected because uh, Google says it's not safe at all to use that. Um, if we go in the third phase, maybe a secure code scan wouldn't detect, maybe it would raise a warning, uh, but definitely a penetration test will detect that that is a problem. But of course it's very, very expensive, right? And at the end, of course, if we detect it in production, then yeah, it's too expensive, right? So why do um, yeah, mistakes happen? Mistakes happen because, yeah, we need a feature, we need a new product as soon as possible, right? So developers have pressure. And maybe security requirements are not followed or not in place, not enforced, or there is no threat modeling session done before uh, deployment. And we still rely on SaaS tools so with a lot of false positive and also, but mainly uh, DevOps do not write security tests, right? Is there a DevOps that write security tests here? That's not true, yeah, it's my colleague, anyways. So um, in mobile we have, let's say two groups, if you consider the security challenges. We have technical challenges for yeah, security engineers uh, because we have different operating system, client-side testing is very important, it's the biggest part of the test, I would say. Different apps, native, hybrid, web, everything, new frameworks. Uh, different languages, so SaaS tools uh, do not support right away new languages, if we think about Kotlin, for example. Um, and different security controls, right? So, um, if we speak about process challenges, as security engineer, what we want to do is actually provide security at DevOps speed, right? We don't want to be there two weeks testing a feature that the developer uh, developed uh, in half day, right? Um, we want to have developers understand security and detect vulnerability 
uh, in early stage. At least the basic uh, security should be covered right away. And of course, I'm also a pen tester, so I would like to focus on fun and serious stuff when I do a pen test instead of coding everything, right? So how can we improve this? Um, so in this talk, we're going to see how to build uh, security integration tests uh, and embed these tests, of course, in the CI, CD. Uh, so we have different kind of tests, right? Um, we have the testing, let's say. Test-driven developments where the tests are written before um, coding and passing the test is crucial, right? Or accepted test-driven uh, development um, where team members collaborate also with other parts to write uh, tests uh, on a uh, functionality. And at the end, we have BDD, behavior-driven development. And we are going to talk about this, where the tests are written in a non-technical language that everyone can understand. So we're going to fill a few gaps here in communication between developers, security, business. And it uses a language called uh, Gherkin. Yeah, because what's the biggest problem with testing? The biggest problem is misunderstanding, right? So if a, writer, a developer write, writes a test, maybe it's a security test, but the security engineer doesn't understand or doesn't know it's already there. So we want to uh, fill this gap, and the solution is yeah, BDD. BDD allows us to describe the behavior of our software in a very understandable language. So an example, uh, this is just an example of BDD test. Um, ability is divided in, into, uh, let's call it, yeah, uh, file, a feature file, so the business facing on my test. As you can see, the test is written in English, pure English. In this case, I want to test a coffee machine. So if there is one coffee in the, um, in the machine and I uh, deposit one dollar, then I press the coffee button and I should be served with a coffee. It's very easy, very understandable, right? The technology facing is what translates the business facing in code, right? In this case, we're using yeah, Ruby. And as we can see, uh, the second function, let's say the given, uh, just initialize our machine with one element in it, right? So yeah, why be it in security? Because if we consider yeah, security engineers, developers, and business, what we have right now is something like this, right? So security engineer speaks one language, developers another language, maybe they can understand each other somewhere. There, business can understand anything they say, right? So with BDD, we fix communication, right? Business will still speak money, but we'll understand that. Um, because we're going to use a, a construction a given, when, then. So. And the developers will write uh, the tests in the same language as the security engineer. And we fix speed, of course, because if developers write security tests, right, and these tests are validated by the security team, then they can go to production much faster. So how do we write this test? Um, the framework we're going to use to write this test is uh, Cucumber. Yeah, the king of BDD, um, because it allows you to write uh, features, like we said, so the business facing, and steps using different type of languages. So it can be adopted by different companies. But what we're going to write is mobile BDD security tests. So in order to do that, first of all, we need to translate the OWASP mobile security testing guide in BDD. We have Sven, the, one of the founder there. Um, so we want to do the mobile security testing guide. It's a set of uh, tests and yeah, security checks to test the security of your app, right? And what we want to do, we want to translate these tests in BDD tests. So we're going to create the features and the steps to be uh, integrated in the CI/CD and be executed on every build, let's say, of your mobile app, right? But in order to do that we need to automate the UI. So one part of the mobile security test is the client-side testing, right? If we don't automate the UI, we cannot access all the code, right? So we're going to use, um, in the example, we're going to use Calabash. That's just a UI automation framework. But 
This test can be written using other uh, UI automation frameworks, such as a few minute sample, right? Um, we can, we're gonna integrate, of course, because we wanna write security tests, not UI security tests, we need to integrate some tools. In example, for Android, uh, you can integrate the Android bug bridge, uh, OWASP to test network issues, or use Drozer, uh, famous pen testing, mobile pen testing tools, that can be automated um, in, your, uh, in your scripts. And of course, what we want uh, is our feedback from, from the tests, right? We want this test to be all green, so we know that we cover the security, the basic security in our app. So the full process in the SDLC will look more or less like this. So we have um, the mobile application security verification standard checklist and our security requirements and of course our threat model. We want to translate this in code, right? We want to translate our threat model, our security requirements in code, right? Um, and of course the mobile security testing guide. So we want to implement standard BDD tests that can be applied on every app because they interact with the operating system, but we want to implement also BDD application-specific security uh, tests, like, an example, testing the business logic or authentication bypass vulnerabilities and so on. Um, we're going to execute this test against uh, acceptance environment, but of course we cannot automate everything, right? We cannot. We're not going to cover everything. So we still have the manual pen test phase done by um, security engineers or pen testers. But what we can do it, uh, is that if our pen tester identifies an issue that can be automated, we go back in the cycle, we introduce new security requirements, we update our threat model, and we implement new BDD security tests, right? And then the next time that issue will be covered in our CI CD. All right, let's go a little bit more technical, not too much. Um, so the whole setup looks like this. So we have our test script, our APK. We have a Docker container with our UI automation framework, right? And the tests can be executed on emulators or devices, real devices. So in example, if you have a farm, you will execute your tests on every device just in one shot. Um, we're going to use as a target the uh, OWASP mobile security MSTG hacking playground, still from Sven there. <laughs> and it's an application that has like, yeah, different buttons, a menu with different vulnerabilities, and um, yeah, just a testing app to practice uh, mobile security, let's say. In example, if we want to test logs for sensitive data, right? Um, our security requirements will be that logs must not contain uh, username, logs must not contain password, uh, information to, uh, that uh, related to the user, PII, let's say. And a security requirement could be that logging should be disabled, if we think about a banking app, in example. So the flow that we want to automate is uh, something like this. We click on the button, we insert username, we insert the password, and we click on login. The app will write a message in the log files that uh, contains our username and password. Of course, don't do it. But this is just to uh, test our uh, scripts, right? So our BDD will look like this. We will have a feature. A feature is just what we are going to do, right? So we're going to test against sensitive data in log files. A scenario, so uh, in this case, our scenario is um, we open the app, we press the button related, uh, related to uh, log files, and we check that no sensitive data are written in the log files. So the BDD test will look uh, like this. Uh, given, uh, I clean all the application logs. So the uh, keyword given is just a precondition, like I said, we're gonna delete all the logs from our phone, from our emulator. We don't want noise, right? We want to test uh, in a clean environment. Then we automate the UI, and the last step is the step that will check that no uh, sensitive information will uh, be stored in the log files. So the first, uh, the given uh, statement will look like this in the step, step file, so the implementation 
is just we'll call the Android debug bridge to clean all the logs. Um, as we can see here, uh, the keyword all is passed to the function, right? And the second, the last statement is the statement that is going to check that no sensitive information are written in the log file. So in this case, uh, the function just uh, gets an input the, the bug level, right, that we want to use of the logs. And in the second part, it's going to use the, um, again, the Android debug bridge, so ADB lock at uh, to, to check that sensitive information are not uh, in the log files. In this case, we're going to use uh, also grep, count how many uh, instances of uh, the sensitive information is logged. And if there is more than one, then the test fails. So you can imagine, in this case, uh, what we want to achieve here is that the developers will write something like this. So on every critical function, on every new feature uh, that shouldn't log information in the log files, they, need to, they will have to write uh, tests like this as part of their, uh, their integration tests, right? So if everything is green, the pen tester won't check that uh, sensitive information are logged while using that feature, right? Um, another example is the testing local storage for sensitive data. Um, so our security requirement will be that databases should not contain sensitive information. As we know, they're insecure. Uh, databases must be encrypted, in example, and we should use the keychain to store the credentials. So in this case, what we're going to do um, is, of course, go through the UI, press the button related to database, and then, as we can see from the last step, we're going to check that the tables uh, that are created and the information that are stored in the table do not, do not contain um, sensitive information. In this case, it's admin password in clear text. So um, if we go in the steps, uh, the, the test will look uh, like this. In this case, we're uh, still using the um, Android debug bridge and SQLite to read from the database. We dump the whole content of the database, and we grab for information that shouldn't be in that, um, uh, in that database, right? And of course, if we find that information, we fail, um, we fail the test. So um, after we execute all the tests, of course, we want developers to execute those tests in the CI CD. And um, when all the tests are uh, completed, we will have something like this. So we can give a report like this to uh, business, to the security guys, to the managers, um, in order to prove and this, that our application is, um, is secure. And it's understandable by everybody because it's normal English. Of course, in this case, the report will contain that the test failed and will tell you where um, it failed. If we want to integrate it in the um, CI CD, we will do something like this. So in this case, we use uh, Jenkins. And as you can see from the uh, red line, it's just a shell command that will uh, um, call our feature files and will um, activate, will go through the tests and um, automate it on our, on our mobile or on our um, emulators, right? So light demo, just to show you how this looks like. Um, let me see. Not easy. <laughs> and this is the other one. All right. Oh, man, this is, this is more difficult, yeah. <laughs> All right. Have you ever tried this to? Right here and so 
We have our mobile device, and on, in the console, it's our Docker container, right? So the, in the Docker container, um, the Docker container is attached to our uh, tests and our uh, folder containing the APK. And what we're going to do is actually spin up the test from the Docker container and then use the emulator to yeah, emulate the, uh, the app. So the command that we're going to use in this case is uh, Calabash Android, because we're going to use Calabash to automate UI, right? But of course, uh, you can use other UI frameworks such as Appium, and the command will be more or less the same, but uh, the concept will be exactly the same. So if we run it, our first test is that uh, database should not contain sensitive information. And in this case, Calabash will spin up the, um, the application and click in the interface. And then, as we can see, in this case, the test fails because the app stores information in the database. And the second test is the um, sensitive information in the log files. And in this case, uh, it fails again because there are information uh, in the log files. As we can see, if we go ADB, lock at, I think she, oh man, this is less secret. Yeah, we have multiple instances of secrets being log logged in the application and here we have, yeah, username and password. So our test will, will fail. So coming back to the presentation, I hope he's doing that, yes. Um, what are the benefits? Yeah, we already discussed a few benefits, but what we want to do with this um, kind of test, we want to increase the security maturity of mobile teams, right? It applies also for other web and desktop application, but um, we want to increase the security because we want developers to understand what are the security issues, right? We want them to write tests for us. Of course, we are going to write first this kind of tests, but then uh, with the time, they will be so good that they will write uh, their own tests because they know better every single line of code in the mobile app, right? Um, we want to uh, have a security baseline always covered, right? We don't want surprise, and we can do this. We can detect vulnerabilities in a very early stage, so on every build, before the app arrives to pen testers or is in production. And of course, we can decrease the time to release, because if the tests are green and we know that the team brought the right tests, they could go to production without even uh, going through the security team, right? And yeah, like I said, we want to translate threats in code in tests because um, it's the only way to keep track and have developers um, writing and understand threats in their threat model. And of course, we can have a ready-to-go security to use security documentation from the Gherkin text that can be used to prove that the app covers uh, the security features. So. Um, this is an open source uh, project on the uh, ING Bank GitHub repo. And uh, you can fork it, you can clone it, you can modify it, do what you like. Uh, if you want to contribute, you're very welcome. Um, so yeah, the last BDD test is for you guys. And let's see. Questions? Yes. No, uh, it's also for iOS. Yes. In this case, we used uh, Calabash Android, like we saw, but there is also Calabash iOS. Appium is for both Android and iOS. So it is related to the UI framework that you're going to use. OK. Other questions? So you're working with developers. Um, so I assume these are, you, you mentioned threat modeling earlier. Um, how difficult is it to train developers to write these kinds of tests? Of tests? Right. Yeah, From well, the threat modeling exercise. 
Yes. Yeah. First of all, um, what we do, we do threat modeling exercises together with uh, developers and other um, like uh, product owners or yeah business. Uh, so once they understand their threats and. Um, for them, it's not difficult to write this kind of test, right? What we need to teach them is how to use security tools, right? And how to automate them. But, um, I mean, I can say as a, um, because I work in ING and the mobile app uh, should be secure, right? The mobile teams are pretty mature in security. But of course, it takes time to uh, let them understand the benefits of uh, this approach. But of course, if they see that they can go to production very fast, they will spend some time learning this. Thank you. Any more questions? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.